Good morning. 8.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Monday, October 28th, 2024. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. So when we look at this morning's update, we've got XRP right around the 52 cent mark. Now what has XRP actually done over the weekend? Well, we bounced out a little bit. We talked yesterday how it should be a bullish bias at least. And we started to target areas. So we needed to break over 51.11 and hold. And then we had to push over that 51.5 cents. It's a, it's a pivot layer. And now it seems that we're bouncing off of that. Now the question would be, if we look at this in a daily perspective on XRP, because that's where I believe you would have to go. We know we've drawn in that what could turn into a massive W reversal if this plays true. However, I don't want anybody to think anything's corrected itself. Because we're still pushing up, as we said, on the weekend. When I talked about this yesterday, actually, no, Saturday, we talked about the fact that coming up to 53.5, now in uh, current terms, it's right around the 53.3 cent level. And that is the 20-day rejection area on the death cross in the daily time frame. Generally, before you break down on a death cross this large in a daily, you're going to come retest the actual resistance after a big fall. So right now, if we come up and we get rejected at the 20 day, that is the overwhelming bearish signal. It'd be very bearish. And then it, if it comes back down quickly, that's how you would know that this pattern's falling out. Right now, four hourly, it looks like we're going to push up in that fashion. But it is the start of a new trading week. We still have a lot of room to go. And we know we went from a thinly traded weekend. Now we've got the USA waking up here. About 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in about an hour is when we usually get some fireworks. If we had bullish pushes, sometimes it corrects right after. But we talked about this bull flag over the weekend. And then if you just look to see where it would break out, we could get a small target here. So I, I like to look at these drop points. And a lot of people look at it as a continuation right away. But they often create these small bull flags that have to be um met with so from here it would suggest when it bounced out about 53 yeah that that lines up this lines up with the error we're talking about coming up look at that in the two hourly that would come up to the 200 day this makes sense if it plays bullish this makes sense that's a that's a legitimate target there at around 53.4 cents legitimate target um and on a start of a trading week, this is exactly what you'd expect. You'd expect some kind of hardcore rejection or a continuation through, but we're going to have to find out one way or the other. So we've drawn this out. We had a big reversal that would take place at 48.6 cent area. And, uh, you know, it did. It came right down to 48.6 and now it's bounced off. Now, is it going to continue up and have a big W reversal? Probably not. But that remains to be seen if we could get some mojo. It still looks like it's going to come down on a bear flag, but we can invalidate this. We have to get over the 200 day and the two hourly, get over the death cross and the 20 day and the daily time frame, which is at like 53.3. This 200 day and the two hours at 53.4. So it does line up pretty nicely. Um, unless we come back down and if we fall below 51.5, you know that we're falling onto that brim of being bearish. Overall, again, you know, for the further drop down. But if we lose 51.1, ultimately, that's not a good sign. If you lose 48.4 cents, and, and today's terms, it's around 48, and you lose the 2018 resistance that's now acting as a support, then it's super bearish. And then you'd probably fall down to that 41, 42 cents. So we've got to stay on the same page here. XRP's up 1.21% or up 824 points to 68,762. Bitcoin is over that major resistance. It's in a megaphone pattern, which is a bullish continuation. This is why I kept saying I'm not so sure if we're going to 100% fall out here or if Bitcoin, because it is on a bull flag and it created that W reversal on that bull flag, which is very interesting. It's just, it's not a Gartley reversal. This is more of a bearish reversal. So now does that mean that it's going to uh, fly out of here off this flag and come up near 86? Are we just going to fly off of like a flag? 
And it's going to be like a fake out here for Bitcoin. Let's see what would happen if it just came up real quickly and then fell back down. Like, could we have that push up to 78K? That That's... That's a legitimate question here. Could Bitcoin jump to 78.6K and then fall back? Maybe retest 68? That absolutely could happen. And the way it's set up, unless it invalidates this W reversal, we're in this cup and handle formation, a megaphone consolidation on the handle. And now it looks like Bitcoin is playing off a bull flag here. So like we said on Sunday, seems like the market's a little bullish, especially uh, for this continuation here off of these small bull flags. And I know it's a small bull flag, but that's a $10,000 move for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin moves $10,000, we're not going to get that bearish rejection and then have, you know, the, the further drop down. But if Bitcoin gets rejected here and comes through right away this morning, and this is just a fake out, it would go very poorly. So a lot of stuff to watch here this morning. There's a lot of stuff going on. Actually, a lot of moving parts. So if you are watching this right now, um, make sure to hit that like button so YouTube does recommend this update. By hitting that like button, YouTube will recommend this and we'll be on the YouTube news feed, which means we'll be recommendable and we'll gain views through the YouTube recommendation by being part of the analytics by you hitting the like button. That is simply how easy it works on YouTube. We did a better job yesterday. Um, so if you are watching and you understand the time and the struggle there is to put in these updates every single day without missing a beat, make sure to hit that like button so I can expand my audience have the largest reach possible and make the most out of my time. All we have is time. And the most precious thing I give you is my time. Every day I get a little bit older. So, you know, I would greatly appreciate that like button. So before I leave, got to get my son to school. So about three more minutes on this update. Um, I want to read this. And if you're looking to trade, if we do have a drop, Motivated Monday, Winning Wednesdays, and FOMO Fridays, even if we don't, join me on BitUnix. Not just for the spot and leverage, but they have IOTA, IOTX, and um, ALGO. So they have three main ones. They also have XRP, obviously, and yada, yada, yada. But for those three alone, join me on BitUnix because that's where I'm going to be buying those three. And then if you want to buy VLO, the XRP Bitcoin pairing, and a couple others, you can join me over on Hotcoin as well because I'll be buying VLO when I do do my accumulation. So make sure you get the exchanges set right now and join me on the journey. So Ripple co-founder slams Gensler as worst public servant of all time. Ripple co-founder Chris Larson offered a scathing criticism of U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler in a recent interview with CNBC, arguing that he is the worst public servant of all times. I think Gary Gensler has been the worst public servant we've ever had in this country, he said. Larson was named as an individual defendant alongside CEO Brad Garlinghouse in the SEC lawsuit that was originally filed in late 2020. The duo was accused of aiding and abetting the alleged securities law violations committed by the enterprise blockchain company. In October 2023, the agency moved to dismiss the charges against the two high-profile executives. Back then, Garlinghouse argued that the SEC wanted to personally ruin him and Larson. It's amazing. It's amazing. Earlier this month, the SEC ended up filing a notice of appeal in its Form C. It revealed that it would go after the executives once again. After his initial appointment, many saw Gensler, a crypto-savvy SEC boss who used to teach a blockchain course at MIT. As their hope, however, the former investment banker ended up pursuing a very aggressive regulation by enforcement strategy, going after a slew of prominent crypto firms such as Coinbase and Binance. Gensler, of course, also continued to pursue the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple that was initially brought by former chair Che Layton. As reported by you today, Garlinghouse slammed Gensler as the Luddit of his times for hindering cryptocurrency progress in the U.S. The SEC has also been criticized by Ripple Boss for failing to prevent the FTX fiasco. So a lot of stuff to uh, to pay attention to. I'm looking at today, and yes, I'm, I'm optimistic because we you know had a little bit of a move. But like I said, unless we get past the 20-day here at 53.40 roughly in the daily, and then that's also the same area in the two hourly where the 200 day resistance is, you're bearish. This is where you would come up for a logical rejection at 53. If we, if we have the strength, you should come up here to get a rejection. It's what we talked about over the weekend. It's where we targeted. So this is what we're looking at. Volume's not looking great. So like I said on Saturday, volume's looking like trash as of right now. 
So we'd be looking for another reversal once it gets up to this rejection point. So we're still looking at and contemplating another drop down. Make sure to hit that like button. I'll catch you later. Hit that like button. You'll see me more. It's that simple. You show me the same compassion and consideration I show you. I show up here more and more and more.